What we have next is a gentleman that, man, I have not only so much respect for, he's come in and made such a difference here at MWR. Do you realize that most of the people, well, listen to this, listen, listen. Do you realize that most of the people that are on stage today getting their MWR Financial Champions and their MWR Passport Award earners, they all come from his organization. I mean, most of them. Do you understand that? Do you understand? Wait. Now you might say, well, how does that happen? It happens when you lead from the front. This gentleman literally created the environment, was the fastest to every rank we had in MWR 1.0 and 2.0, and you already know it was much more difficult to get to top ranks there than it is today. Are you guys with me? Okay? He helped make MWR 3.0 happen. This gentleman, not only does he come out here and build a business and have so many people winning with him, but he lives... The, the, the values of MWR. Are you guys with me here? He is a testament of that. He has created an environment where literally he bought a, he, if through MWR while he's in this process, do you realize he now has 20 acres in an exclusive neighborhood where he has entertainers as neighbors, athletes as neighbors. Are you guys with me here? And he's turned that into a cash flow machine that makes money for him where he doesn't have to go build it for you. Are you guys guys are hearing me. I don't know a better person that can come to this stage right now and talk and give a money talk than a person who's living it, experiencing it. We affectionately know him, know him as the G-Tote, the greatest trainer of all time. Let's hear for him, Mr. Brian M. Bean. Good stuff, man. Appreciate it, man. What's up, MWR? How y'all feel? That was terrible. How y'all feel on this side? That was terrible. They're killing y'all. How y'all feel in the middle? That was terrible. How y'all feel on this side? All the way across. Let's go. How y'all feel? How y'all feel? How y'all feel? How y'all feel? Let's go. ATL representing just one time. Y'all doing okay? Yeah. Hey. <laughs> Listen, man, I don't have a lot of time. But is the ERC program going to be incredible or what? Yeah. Like anything, man, I don't know if you really understand it. I don't either. <laughs> you don't know nothing about me. I don't understand half this stuff. I don't know the comp plan. I don't know the stars. <laughs> I don't know the levels. I know assets, cash, assets, cash, and more assets, and more cash. You let me pay, stand up one more time. Stand up. Let me show y'all something. Everybody on your feet. Let's get this energy going. I'm going to make a statement. I want you to clap one time. Then I'm going to make another statement. You're going to clap twice. Every time I make a statement, you're going to add a clap. It's not as hard as it sounds. I'm going to make five statements. First, we're going to clap one time. Practice. Let's go. Terrible. One more time. Now, my second statement, you're going to clap how many times? Two times. All right, y'all got it? This is how you become a millionaire. Y'all ready? This is called a money talk. I didn't become a millionaire by not doing the following things. I'm going to give you five quick steps. To be successful, first, you got to change the way you walk. Then you got to change the way you talk. Then you got to change the way you think. You got to change the way you act. That's how you change your life. Even if I suck, y'all gave me a standing ovation. <laughs> I travel all over the world, it never fails. This keynote can be horrible, and I'm gonna tell my son, they stood up for daddy and clapped five times. <laughs> have a seat, man, y'all ready to go? Yeah. I'm gonna get, y'all know I like to have a lot of fun. Those who haven't met me, I'm a straight clown. I do, I do character skits, I do costumes, but I'm very, very serious when it comes to making money and showing people how to make money. I'm very serious about it, because I remember when I was BROK, and my E was on layaway. Some of y'all too young to know about layaway. <laughs> I was not on stages. People weren't playing money. I mean, playing songs, and I didn't have money. When I walked into a room, it wasn't hip hop. It was the blues. <laughs> so I know what it's like to have to choose between a cold shower or a power, because I can't pay both. I can't pay both. 
the light man gonna get paid or the gas man gonna get paid. So I tried both. I was like, all right, no lights, but at least I got some warm water. Whew, but I kept hitting my knee. <laughs> so I was like, all right, we're gonna cut the power on, but I gotta take a cold shower. Whew, it ain't gonna work. I got tired of having to decide which bill was gonna get paid. So when I was 22 years old, I fired my boss. I made a decision when I was 19. At 19, Morehouse College graduate, got a degree in English, got a different color sash, got all this stuff, and nobody taught me anything about finances. My college professor, who was teaching economics, I caught him outside one day trying to close his car door. The window was shattered, tape was on it, he teaching me about the bell curve, and he can't even close his car door. Ch-doo. 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 <laughs> Now tomorrow I gotta listen to you talk about this we gonna, how we gonna make some money. <laughs> That's all I can see. <laughs> how a professor teaching me about finances and you don't have none? Just one red flag. Nothing wrong with college, nothing wrong with education. But I said I gotta start learning from people that's making more money in a week than I'm making in a year. And I start doing that. Made my first million dollars in my 20s, lost it all because nobody told me the things I'm going to tell y'all today. <laughs> Thank God, fear stands for fail early and responsibly. What is it? Fail early and responsibly. Don't worry about your fears. I was young enough and naive enough to not believe that I couldn't do it again. So in my 30s, I made another million dollars. <laughs> and I said, this time I'm going to keep it. 20 years later, I'm still getting paid off money I made back in the 90s. See, you become a millionaire with your mentality first. But first, you got to understand there's certain rules of this game that if you don't know them, you get played by them. Why do you think when you walk into a bank, they give you a sucker? They be like, how many of these you want? You be like, give me two. Oh, one for check and one for savings? Oh, you want two suckers? Give me a red and a purple. They be in the back, we gave them two suckers. I got tired. I got tired. Don't give me no more suckers. Don't give me no more lollipops. I'm sick and tired of not understanding the rules of the game. Who want to know the rules of the game real quick? Here's one key to getting wealthy. Y'all ready? It's not hard. The first thing you got to understand is that there are three social economic systems. Write that down. Three systems. This is called money talk. Y'all ready? This side say money on my right. Money? money. This side say talk. talk. Money. money? Talk. talk? It's three systems. How many? Three. three. The first one is communism. Communism means zero opportunity. So if you're taking notes, put zero opportunity. If you live in a communist country, there's zero opportunity for the citizens. The government runs everything. The government tells you how much to eat. The government tells you when you're going to eat. The government tells you what you're going to get. The government tells you how often you're going to get it. That's like Cuba, for example. Cuba, for example, will be a communist country. I'm not knocking any of this. I'm just telling you the philosophy of, this, of, this, of the country. Does that make sense? It's not good, bad, or indifferent. I want to go to Cuba. So I'm not knocking communism. I'm telling you there are rules to each system. Does this make sense? All right, so communism says you own a cow. You milk the cow. I come in and tell you how much milk I'm going to take, and I sell it back to you. That's communism. So you have the cow. I have the power to take the cow. Then you're going to milk the cow. Then I'm going to tell you how much milk I'm going to give you and how much money I'm going to give you for the cow that you once owned. That's communism. Is that the United States? No. System number two, socialism. Socialism is Norway, Denmark, Sweden. See, people don't tell you this stuff. In socialist countries, write this down, limited opportunity. The ideology of socialism is all of us look the same. Everybody just, that way crime is low. You don't know whether I'm a lawyer. You don't know if he's an educator. The, lawyer, the, the, the man who, the sanitation worker, looks the same. The goal in socialism is to have limited opportunities and make us all equal in appearance. So socialism says if you have 10 cows and I got four cows, we got 14. 
Now, the person that had four, like, yes. Now, in ideology, ideally, the person that has 10 is like, cool, because now that we got 14, you can help me with my what? 10. So together, we got 14 cows. Does this make sense? So now that's a socialist country. We put our cows in the same barn and we divide the milk evenly, even though you had 10, I had four. It's understood that together we got 14, so the collective effort of us all rises. Write down limited opportunities. Is that America? No. America is capitalism. Capitalism is unlimited opportunities. Ideally, a capitalist says, you have a bull, I have a cow. We mate the cow and bull and we create babies and we come in business together and we sell all the milk. The problem is one of us eventually gonna think the cow is more important than the bull. <laughs> and the bull is more important than the cow. So it's only a matter of time in America before the two of us start believing, now wait a minute, if it weren't for my bull, we wouldn't have no babies. If it weren't for my cow, we wouldn't have no babies. Then one of us pretty soon got to figure out how we're going to get the other one out of business. That's capitalism. The problem with most Americans, you don't know the rules that's being played in the game you in. It's called systematic oppression. is systematic oppression. See, if you don't know the rules of the game, like any sport, you lose. Let me show you how confusing capitalism appears to be, but how simple it really is. In basketball, I was all right back in the day, Bear. You know what I'm saying? I, I never made the team, but I was a hood legend. You feel me? <laughs> you didn't want it on the, Dom, you didn't want it on the open court. You know, no look, you know. They cut me in ninth grade, but that's, I'm going to be all right. In basketball, a field goal is how many points? Two. Now, in football, a field goal is three points, but they both call field goals. But in one sport, if I shoot a field goal, I get two points. Now, in football, I get three points for kicking a field goal. But in football, I also got something called an extra point. But in basketball, one point is a free throw. See how confusing this gets? But I do, got to, I do have two points in football, but it's called a safety. But in basketball, it's called a field goal. But in football, a field goal is three points. But a, a point after is one point, and in basketball, it's a free throw. That's how they got you thinking about your money. They got you so confused, you think it's hard, so you just give up. It's not hard. Money is simple. It boils down to terminology and perspective. It boils down to semantics, just you understanding that you can't kick through the uprights in basketball. So here's what they did. They played a dangerous game on you a long time ago. They played a dangerous game on you a long time ago, and they didn't even let you know that the game was being played. So I wake up every single day with a mission and purpose and passion and tools and speaking engagements and websites and quarterly events and seminars and YouTube channels and videos and conferences and keynotes to tell everybody the rules of this game. That's what I wake up and do every day. That's what I wake up and do every day. Somebody got to explain the rules to this game. See, I'm living out my purpose. I know what God put me through, all the things I've been through to land me in this moment in my life where I could get rich and explain to people the rules of this game. This is way bigger than y'all can ever imagine. The rules are simple. Many, many, many years ago, this country got in some financial trouble. So when this country got in trouble, guess what they came to to help save them? The people. Everybody say, that's us? So the government said, you know what? We need some help. We need all of you guys to chip in and help with this U.S. deficit so we can put roads in, so we can put streets in, so we can put railroads in, so we can put lights in. And we, the people, said, no problem. We will help you because this is a great country and we're here to serve. The government said, perfect. This is what we're going to do. We're going to give you a report every year. And on that report, we're going to tell you we put the roads in. We put the highways in. We put the streetlights in. We put the railroads in. So we're going to give you a 
report. We're going to give you this file that shows all you guys exactly what we did with your money. Then years later, we still contributing. Now that was supposed to only last for a little while. Where the people help the government by pitching in. That wasn't supposed to last forever. Then they flipped it. They said, you know what? We don't believe how much you telling us you making, so we need you to give us a file instead of us giving you a file. Then the game started. So now we tell them how much we made, but they're not showing us what they doing with it. But that was the, the, the agreement was many years ago now, for a little while, you report to us what you're doing with the dollars we're giving you. Now we report to them. See, people wonder why I wake up every morning and I got a passion for teaching and educating and creating things like Bean Acres to show you that I can live right next to Ludacris. Fast and Furious, I go watch, them, I go watch it at his house. I wake up every day and prove to my son, who's 18 years old, that he don't have to grow up on both sides of the tracks like I did. He got 20 acres now. I said, son, you see what we did today? The Georgia Lottery shot a commercial in our backyard. You remember when all this was dirt, all of it was nothing, it all looked like trash, and I told you one day, since Atlanta's the new Hollywood, they're gonna be shooting movies back here? Yeah, you see that Georgia Lottery commercial? That's the backyard. See, now all he knows is vision. See, this is what I got tired of. I act like it's a smoke-filled room full of people. And their job every day <laughs> old players be having on the end Leela. <laughs> I don't know how to talk with him. I wake up and act like every day there's a smoke filled room full of people that are meeting about how they can take advantage of us. That's how I wake up. <laughs> so there's a table full of, this ain't a black and white thing. It's a have and have not thing. This ain't, this ain't about black and white. Yeah, it ain't no white people sitting around. Minorities got a kid. It ain't white people sitting around talking about it's good and bad and everything. They're talking about how can we get them? It's elite and educated versus those who could be elite, but they kept us uneducated. So they sit around, and this is how I act. This is just my personality. I wake up, and I act like they're going, how can we get them again? I got it. This is what we'll do. We'll teach everybody to get a job because a job pays the highest tax bracket, which is 28 to 33 percent. So what we got to do, we won't teach them about Schedule C's or capital gains, which get lower taxes. We'll teach them about a W-2 from ages K through 12. So if we teach them that and run that all the way through undergrad, master's, and PhD, then they'll believe that paying us first should be the priority instead of paying themselves. That feeds our children and grandchildren first because they give their tax dollars to us while we make money with money, and money made with money pays lower taxes. Huh. Then another man at the table, this is how I act. You know, I ain't saying this happening, I'm saying this is how I act. Another man at the table said, you know what? Now, if we take the tax dollars off the top, they won't understand the difference between their gross and their net, so their net will make them feel gross. So if we take the tax dollars off the top, you get the tax dollars, and then they'll come to you to borrow the money, now we got them again. Because now they're paying for things two and three times, because got, we got them thinking they made 80000 a year, but the, the, the qualifications was on their gross, but they really don't get their gross. They take home 62000 so they'll spend the rest of their life trying to make up the 18000 and they pay us back 22000 
So they robbed us again. Now they taught us all this when we got out of college, we were in our most vulnerable state. So then when you walk up and you're a freshman at college, I know, because I went to my house, they greet you with this table. And the table says, Visa, MasterCard, Discover. <laughs> See, I am broke as a joke. I already got my tax dollar, my little part-time job, you know. I ain't got no money, so I got to get Visa, MasterCard, or Discover. Then a few years later, they try and discover where I live, because I can't pay it back. <laughs> So they robbed me again. <laughs> now, the only reason I got to college is because I got to pay all the student loan debt back. But the reason I got student loan debt is because I can't afford to go to college. The reason I couldn't afford to go to college is because the system y'all put me in didn't allow my parents to make enough money to have enough money to send me to college. So now they robbed me again. <laughs> OK? So now we got a generational curse. I'm walking up to the Morehouse College table. Y'all got Visa, MasterCard, and Discover, because whether y'all want to believe it or not, corporate America teaches institutions what to teach, because if it wasn't for institutions giving them endowments, then they wouldn't teach you, they would teach you entrepreneurship 101, but they can't, because the check too big from corporate America, so college is going to teach what you want them to teach. So they robbed me of a pure education, now I got robbed again. So they robbed me with the taxes, they robbed me with the interest, they robbed me with the credit cards, and now because the job I got won't allow me to pay my student loans and credit cards back, my credit took a hit. So now they robbed me again. <laughs> Been robbed five times and I ain't but 22. <laughs> See, let me tell y'all something. They ain't robbing you with no gun no more. They're robbing you with an ink pen. And y'all sitting around here every day waking up and mad because a prospect ain't got 149. And you tripping because your family won't support you. And you tripping because your best friend quit the business and went inactive. And you tripping because you was at $20 a day and for two days you went down to five and you ready to give up on a million dollar business because you can't afford $149. It's systematic oppression. It's systematic oppression. So here I am. I wake up every morning. I ain't saying this is true, but I just act like somebody got us in a smoke-filled room. <laughs> now my credit score in the 500s. So because my credit score in the 500s, because I couldn't pay Visa, MasterCard, and Discover, Discover trying to discover where I live. So my credit score is in the 500s, so now I can't own a house, so now I have to rent. So I can't build equity, so now I'm building somebody else's equity, so they robbed me again. <laughs> I ain't saying it's true, I just act like somebody in the smoke filled room. <laughs> so now since my credit scores are low, I got to rent. And because I got to rent, I can't own. But now I'm a land somebody is a landlord because they understood some rules of the game. They're building equity and handing their children deeds. Whereas I'm handing my children debt. Now if I don't have enough money to be a homeowner, I definitely don't have enough money to invest. And if you're not investing, you're not even on the road to wealth, so now you're getting robbed for life. You've been robbed six times and you ain't even 25. That's capitalism. See, when you understand that it's the isms that get you in trouble. I'm going to train on this tomorrow. I don't want to blow this. I wrote a training for y'all, special training tomorrow called the Politics and Language. It's the isms that get you in trouble. And capitalism, don't get it twisted. I'm not leaving the country. You don't see me nobody on robots tomorrow. It's terrible over here. <laughs> you, you see people on robots trying to what? Get over here. I ain't never seen nobody talking about, man, we got to get the hell out of America. So I talk bad about it, but I talk bad about it because I'm mad at people who give up on this business, they don't, they don't understand. It's millions of people out there who need what we offer. That's what I'm mad at. That's what I'm mad at. I'm not mad at the country. I'm mad at the country. I'm mad at this old, outdated education. So now, the bank, the government robbed us first. Am I right? 
property taxes, state taxes, ad valorem taxes, federal taxes, capital gain taxes, luxury taxes, ad valorem taxes. By the time you get finished paying all these taxes, all your money gone. Now, big business rob you. See, I'm not saying it's true. I just wake up every day and act like somebody saying, how can we get them? How does big business get you? Well, every single solitary commercial is designed to get your money even at the detriment of your own health. Think I'm lying? Middle of the night, 2 a.m., you up? Because you think about finances. They know that. They've done billions of dollars in, in um, studies to create statistics. Depression, anxiety, look at the commercials that play when you up. They name so much stuff, after a while, you're like, that's me. <laughs> I'm the most upbeat, positive brother you know on the planet. I was looking at a commercial the other day. Are you tired? <laughs> My eye <I've> been lately. <laughs> Exhausted. I've been feeling like myself. Sweating. It is hot. You need Rudithol. I ain't thought about nothing about no Rudithol. All of a sudden, because I'm tired, I'm sleepy, I'm up, you got me at night. Now my depression and my anxiety having a battle. And Big Pharma will sell you anything at the detriment of your own well-being. So let's be clear. Anxiety is my fear that something is always going to happen. Depression kicks in when I let my anxiety overtake me. So I'm stuck between anxiety and depression. Now our kids ain't going outside no more because they all, all they got is social media and video games. They out of shape. They overweight. <laughs> Suicide rates are sky high. Because kids are comparing themselves, and adults do it too, on social media to people you don't know nothing about. They showing you pictures of their best life, not their worst life. So you think their whole life look like that. It don't. Half of them really miserable. But write this down. Depression is comparison minus perspective. Depression is comparison minus perspective. See, a lot of you guys get depressed and down about your business because you start comparing this and that. You know, even pe people on my own team have done this to me before. You can't compare yourself to me, not because I'm all that, but I've been doing this 25 years. It's the only thing I got over you is I've been doing it longer, so look, little stuff don't bother me. Don't bother me like it bothers you. I've been doing it longer, that's all. So depression is comparison minus perspective. So now big business running drugs through our whole country. And after a while, they name so much stuff, you start believing you got one of them. So the next thing you know, you on Rudithol. They got you again. You ain't need no Rudithol. Tell you how bad it is. They name the symptoms that's going to happen to you, and you act like you don't care. Now look, three toes might fall off. Your hairline will recede to the back. You will grow a ponytail. You might have another tail. Two toes may turn colors. You'd be like, you know what, I don't care nothing about that. Because on the commercial, the lady look good. She about fine at you. You could lose all your hair. It don't look like it to me. The images don't match what they saying. It's a depression commercial and the family on the beach. If you really want to cater to a depressed person, you can't show all this happiness. They want you to buy the drug that you don't need. All you need is some personal growth, self-development, and a good mentor. Give me a call. That's all you need. You got to be depressed by all this foolishness. So, big business pays huge endowments to corporations, I mean to uh, colleges, because big business tells colleges what to what, what to teach. Big business needs more employees. The more people that pay, that are employees, pay the highest tax what? 
code known as a W-2. The W-2 is the highest tax code. Why? Because the government said we need you to give, our, give them the money first. So now you get a refund. Re means again. Fund means money. So a tax refund is simply your money again. <laughs> Then when you get a refund, they tax the refund as earned income, even though it's your money again. They made trillions of dollars and gave you a percentage of it back, but because that's the first four or five figure check you ever see, you excited, so you file a rapper refund. So they robbed you again. You need it so bad to pay off all the debt you didn't got in because you're getting a refund. Whereas if you adjust your W-4, got your money up front, you can pay the debt off, now the government and the banks work for you. <laughs> See, I got tired of the smoke-filled room. And somebody had to be bold enough and brave enough to come over to MWR and just set it off and let the country know that we're here to stay the veil has been pulled back. The curtain has been removed. The ignorance is no longer bliss. We know the rules of the game, and we're going to teach them till we can't teach them no more. I'm not some conspiracy theorist, but I do believe that somewhere in some room, somebody going, how can we get them? You don't have to believe me. Let me ask you a question. In every hood, why you got payday loans? So let me get this straight. Let me get this straight. In every hood, brown and black communities, white communities, every hood, I don't care what color you are, if you're in the hood, you know you're in the hood. Why do I need an advance on my paycheck? Because you know that you can charge me an exorbitant amount of interest because I'm that far behind with my cash flow. Not only that, you got title loans. So I'm going to give you the title to my car that I need to get to work. I'm in such dire straits that you're going to take my title at an interest rate of 29 to 34 percent. If I had to give you the title to my car, I'm not going to have the payoff in time. Now you got my car, I can't get to work. I lose the house, somebody else get it for pennies on the dollar. They robbed you with the title loans. <laughs> Systemic oppression. It's on purpose. It's on purpose. See, America the greatest country in the world if you play by the rules of the wealthy. See, my goal is to wake up every day, right? Like I'm approaching 45,000 a month. I'm approaching 1,500 a day. No big deal, because the top is 8,500, right? But my goal is to make it where MWR's daily pay at 8,500 is the least I receive. <laughs> See, when you start understanding the things I'm going to teach y'all this, this evening, this afternoon, with the six-figure playbook, you'll start understanding how money starts working for you. I made $5,000, I made $4,638 on an investment yesterday in one day. MWR gave me $1,000, so in one day I made $5,672 in one day. Because now, when you free your mind, all you see is assets. Let me tell you the key, and I'm going to bring some uh, guys up here just to do a Q&A with you guys. Let me tell you the key. You really want to know what the real key is to generating wealth and how nothing really bothers me and why I'm so non-emotional when it comes to business? I'm human, so I'm emotional, but I'm not emotional when it comes to expectations and engagement with people and stuff like that. You, you know why? Because here's what I firmly believe. Thoughts are things. This I know for sure. Your feeling, never forget this, is a direct reflection of what's to come. So if you feel bad, bad things are coming. Because you're speaking to the ether and you're putting out an energy 
into the atmosphere that attracts those exact same protons, neutrons, and electrons, and they're coming your way because all you think about is what you don't want. These are facts. These are facts. In science, you learn. I'm going to give you the key. I'm going to give you the key, and then I'm going to give you some steps on a six-figure uh, playbook training I'm going to do in about two hours. Y'all want the initial steps, the initial key? Here's the key. Watch. If you work a nine to five, it controls your life. Now, if people don't want to hear that. I'm not speaking bad about it. I love our firefighters. I love our police officers. I love our nurses. I'm not talking bad about your job. I want you to understand the mentality that thoughts are things. Watch. Every molecule has protons, neutrons, and everybody knows which one go around? Electrons. Everybody follow that? So everything that you see was once a thought. This screen was a thought. That camera was a thought. This podium was a thought. This stage was a thought. This hotel was a thought. That screen was a thought. These lights were a thought. This suit was a thought. So somebody thought about something, and then it manifested later. Am I right? So if everything is in motion, and everything is protons, neutrons, and electrons appearing, even solid items like the stage appear to be still, but if we broke it down, and broke it down, and broke it down, and broke it down, and put it under a microscope, you will see protons, neutrons, and electrons, which means everything is in motion, even though solid objects appear to be still. This is actually in motion. So if an opera singer can step back and shatter something inanimate with her voice, her brain can send signals through her vocal cords and shatter that glass from a distance. So something here can move something there. Then why you think you can't do whatever you want to do? So you mean to tell me an opera singer can get to a high enough pitch Train her, her brain can tell her vocal cords or her larynx and her lung capacity to reach a high enough pitch to shatter something that is out here that she is not touching. Then you can't tell me that the thoughts that you have don't attract the things that you want or don't, which means if you are only living for the weekend, Then five and a half, not five, five and a half out of seven days, you are thinking about the place you don't want to be. Brian, why you retired when you was 19 years old? Easy, I was, either gonna, have, I was gonna kill somebody. <laughs> I was gonna get fired. So because you're trained from K through 12, then four extra years of undergrad, then master's, then PhD, you're trained to work a job. Well, if thoughts are things, and I'm somewhere every day that I really don't want to be, it controls how much I make. It controls what my clothes look like. It controls what my light bill, when my light bill is paid. It controls the neighborhood I live in. It controls the education my kids get. It controls the foods I eat. It controls whether I see the world. Your job controls all of your thoughts. That's why you have to stay in this business to get an expansion mentality and get away from your contraction mentality. See, there's a difference between vision and focus. When you get to four figures a day, it's because you've mastered the ability to expand your mind to things you never believed before, but contract down and stay focused on what's most important. I'm going to teach you the four priorities tomorrow. You've got to expand your mind on things you've never seen before, but then contract it down on what's most important. Most of y'all expand your mind on something like your job. You're in traffic in the morning. You don't get a weekend because Friday, let's be honest, you worked. So you get happy hour. <laughs> Saturday, you off. And guess what you do on Sunday? You get ready for Monday. So people tell me, it's the weekend. I get paid Friday. He said, no, your bills get paid Friday. You didn't get paid Friday. The bills won't get paid Friday. So it's the weekend. So now if thoughts are things, and I can shatter that glass with my voice, which is an inanimate object, 
and I can actually create enough ether in the atmosphere to travel and bring the molecules, protons, neutrons, and electrons that relate to my thought and my mentality, then I have to put myself in a position where I'm thinking more about what I want and less about what I don't want, and you will be up out of there. That's why this business is so important. That's why this training is so important. That's why when I made you stand up and clap, the first thing you said was you got to change the way you what? Think. Then you got to change the way you walk. Then you got to change the way you talk. Then you got to change the way you act. And that's how you change your life. It begins with your thoughts. So how in the world are you going to have an abundant mentality when your job has a contraction environment? I'm going to close with this before I bring up the panelists and close out. People miss this. Just like you got a, a balance sheet, your job has one too. So here's the problem. You and MWR, you and your organization, y'all talking about traveling the world, y'all talking about expansion, y'all talking about y'all at the Mirage, y'all on the strip, y'all going to see performances, some of y'all hitting the tables, good luck. <laughs> Never get on your first night. <laughs> so your job, so you are on the expense side of your job's balance sheet. You on the west side, expenses. But they got you thinking, in most big business, that you're on the other side. But as long as the check is going out, it's only going out because you're getting paid for services that you've rendered. Well, here you are with an expansion mentality. I want to go to Europe, I want to go to Egypt, I want to go to Spain, I want to go to Dubai, I want to go to Italy, I want to go to Greece. You expanding, your boss like, how can we cut it? How can we trim it down? I don't know if she can pay too much. Who can we bring in? How can we automate this? I want to be a legacy. I'm going to live a legacy, not leave a legacy. My grandchildren ain't going to work. I got... She just don't know. We about to get rid of her. We got to get out of here. <laughs> We did the numbers, you didn't bring it in what we thought, it just ain't worth it. They. <laughs> but I'm gonna tell y'all a secret before I go. You hang around this thing long enough and stay coachable enough and build this business the right way, I can promise you. Let me tell you something. See, I'm at a point in my life right now where we ain't got no cigarettes, <laughs> okay? See, I'm at a point in my life right now, things going on for O'Brien Bean. So you're going to walk in there and put your feet up on the desk one day and take that cigarette butt and mash it on his forehead and light your cigar huh? and tell him we out of here, all right? I'm Brian Bean. I see the magazines. Thanks a lot. I appreciate it. I appreciate it.